Well, I want to thank you for tuning into this YouTube broadcast. Let me introduce myself for, to begin with. I'm Gary Preston, and many of you know that I'm here for three months uh, filling in for Pastor Barry as he and Jeannie are in the States. And it's a great joy to be here, uh, part of Aviano Baptist Church for this short period of time. Uh, for five years, I was the pastor at uh, Frontline Community Church in Ramstein, Germany, also an IBC church, a similar congregation to the church here, and it is a military congregation by and large, although we had a good number of English-speaking Germans and internationals there in our church as well. It was a great joy to serve there for five years, and I also was part of the IBC, the Organization Association of Churches that uh, Aviano Baptist Church belongs to, and I was the director of Strengthening Churches, one of their core strategies. And now Pastor Barry, he is the director of that same core strategy with the IBC. Uh, I recruited him and handed that uh, mantle over to him, and he's been doing a great job with that as well while he pastors here at Aviano Baptist. So my role here uh, in these few months is uh, the official title, uh, Interim Pastor, uh, more of a placeholder for Pastor Barry. And um, we have, he and I have been friends for about seven years when I first came into contact a number of years ago with the IBC, and we've known uh, him and Jeannie. My wife's name is Suzanne, and we both look forward to meeting you as soon as we're able to uh, gather together on a Sunday, as well as in some of the small groups, home groups, and Bible studies as well. But we'll be here for these uh, three months as uh, somewhat of a place keeper, um, we're the interim pastor, but really to, to be here to be the, the vision keeper, as Barry described it to me, to help the church continue on with a fresh vision, the new vision that has been um, refocused and refreshed <clears throat> over the last couple of years. My relationship with uh, Aviano Baptist Church goes back a number of years, about seven since we first met Barry and Jeannie, but then I, I was the one who led the church last year in 2018 it was, through their vision refresh process as they came to renew and refresh God's vision for the church. Uh, you may know that current vision, uh, to love Jesus more and to lead more to love Jesus. That's a vision that excites me personally. It's a vision that expresses the desire of my heart as a pastor, that churches help strengthen those who are followers of Jesus, but also broaden that and invite others more to discover what it means to follow Jesus and to discover the difference that he can make in their lives. And so your vision, the way you put it here at, at, in the church, is to connect uh, people to a loving local church. And I know that Aviano Baptist Church is that kind of local fellowship. And then to help people grow, to take the next step in their relationship with Jesus as they grow, as they learn what following him looks like and how that can make a difference in their lives, and then to send, send in people into the service of Christ in their community, in this local church, and throughout the world. And so we want to be placeholders and vision keepers for that vision during these three months while Pastor Barry and Jeannie are in the States. <clears throat> My wife and I, I guess Suzanne is her name, we look forward to getting to know you in various meetings and opportunities as we gather together over the, these next three months. I know we'll not, we'll not be meeting this Sunday, but we want to begin this week to gather in home groups and Bible studies and other gatherings that the church will have in smaller groups that are allowed to, be, uh, to take place during this season of the coronavirus. Uh, we understand these are unexpected times and a little unexpected situation with the coronavirus, of course. Uh, there's no service today on, on Sunday, but we will keep you in... Uh, We'll over-communicate. I might say we'll over-communicate with you as to the plans and when we'll be meeting again and how we're going about that. We want to coordinate our decisions together. Um, I've talked with each of the deacons, and we've brought Pastor Barry into that loop and making the decision not to have service again today. But we will continue to explore that in conjunction with the local uh, authorities and ordinances and with what the guidelines are from the military base here. Uh, we'll be monitoring other local churches as we, as we already have done, both IBC churches locally here in Italy and other English-speaking international churches 
in our community and try to making, make the decisions as a team that are the best decisions that we can make for the safety of our congregation, safety of others and guests that you might bring. And so when Sunday services reconvene, I want you to know we'll be taking some extra precautions uh, in terms of cleanliness, uh, in terms of uh, sanitizing, in terms of greeting one another and so forth. And we'll keep you informed as to how that will transpire. But I want to, uh, so I want to give you a little bit of uh, heads up and information about how we're proceeding. We want you to have great confidence that as a leadership team, we have your health and safety uh, very much in the forefront of our minds. We also, though, are anxious and looking forward to getting back together, that the body can function with one another. And if there are any needs that you have personally or in your family, well, please email the church. Let us know. You can email me. I'll be receiving those emails at pastor at Aviano Baptist um, Church uh, email. So you can send those and you can get that on the website if you don't have it. But we would love to continue to minister to you and to care for you, even though we're not meeting together on Sundays. Uh, we will begin, I, we trust, uh, in the next week or two, though, the regathering, uh, opening up God's Word and sharing together and being a part of all that God is doing in our service and in our lives and uh, looking into His Word and teaching again. I have a couple of series, Bible teaching series, that will begin once we regather. <clears throat> but maybe to close our time here this, uh, in this little session, I want to give you some encouragement uh, from God's Word. Uh, encouragement that is, I think is relevant to us, particularly during this time with the coronavirus. Uh, from the Old Testament, I want to look at a couple of passages that I would just share with you. Uh, one of those, of course, come, both of them actually come from the, the Psalms, uh, the book of Psalms. And the first one is from Psalm 91, Psalm 91, verses uh, 9 through 11. The psalmist writes, if you say the Lord is my refuge, and you make the Most High your dwelling, no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent. That's God's promise to the people of Israel and to his people today as well. And it really flows out of the promise of scripture from Psalm 46. Psalm 46, 1, maybe a very familiar Old Testament passage from the Psalms to you. The psalmist writes, God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the sea. And he's down in verse 7, he concludes this. He said, the Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. And so I want to encourage you as you hold close to God. You stay close to him. He becomes your, for he is your fortress. He becomes your refuge, your strength. The promise is that we need not fear. Even though there's panic, uh, maybe all around us, there's certainly panic and going on in, in the States, maybe in a place where you've come from or where you, where you have family or loved ones or friends there. Panic that seizes people wondering what to do with this coronavirus. Will it strike us? Will it kill someone we love? We can be prepared because we don't have to be fearful of that. God says we trust in him. We need not fear. No matter what comes, he will guard us and guide our hearts. We will be wise in the precautions we take. We, we must, of course. But it's also an opportunity to place our trust in God. And I want to encourage you to do that. It's an opportunity to show confidence in Jesus to our friends, to our, co our colleagues, our co-workers, to our family, and an opportunity to be the hands and the feet of Jesus to our neighbors, to let them know that you're not fearing this, your faith is in God. You're taking precautions wisely, but you trust God to protect your life and your family, and to then be the hands and feet of Jesus to encourage our friends and neighbors, to offer them care and help, to pray for them if they fall ill, to be those who come alongside and say, we know that God can take care of each of us. And even those who are not yet followers of Christ, we can show them God's care and God's grace and mercy during this time. And the psalmist in Psalm 91 reminds us that those of us who put our trust in God, 
that he is our refuge, we have this opportunity to live under God's protection and to live in obedience and faith and trust in him and to see what he will do in our lives and how he will grow and strengthen our faith during this time of uncertainty. So I want to encourage you, don't fear, don't be anxious about it, but grow in your trust of God as your refuge and your strength. And if you're struggling with that, maybe you are fearful or anxious, I, I want to encourage you, don't condemn yourself. Don't shame yourself for that. That's a, a very natural response to be fearful and to be uncertain in times like this. But we can follow God's prescription for fear. When you fear, and God says, here's a way around it. Here's a way that you deal with it. In fact, we find that in the book of Philippians in the New Testament probably some words, verses that may be familiar to you. The Apostle Paul wrote this in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. He said, do not be anxious about anything, including the coronavirus, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I would unpack that just a little bit for us. But he says that we're not to be anxious about anything, in terms of to, to fret or to stew or to be fearful, that our anxiety does not need to take control of our lives in any situation, anything, including the current situation with this terrible disease, the coronavirus going around this region. But he says, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, we can come to a loving Heavenly Father who understands us, a merciful Heavenly Father who loves us unconditionally. And we simply present our request to God and say, God, my request is to take care of this anxiety, this fear that may have gripped my heart and my life or my friends, my family. To lay those issues before God, to bring them to Him, and Paul says the result of that is simply that the peace of God, God's peace that transcends all understanding, will guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. It sometimes sounds almost too simple to be able to do that, too good to be true. But that's the remarkable thing about trusting in Christ, that he's our fortress, he's our strength. We bring those requests to him. We bring those anxieties to him, those concerns, and his peace replaces the fear. His peace overcomes the anxiety. His peace reigns in our hearts and our minds. So I encourage you, if you're feeling anxious, you have a lack of peace, or maybe fears overcome your heart, your mind, name that fear, bring it to God, leave it with him, and rest in his peace. Let his peace overwhelm and guard your heart and your soul in Christ Jesus. If you're struggling with that, and as you gather together, maybe a Bible study group or a home group, I would encourage you to share that with them. Ask for their prayers. Pray for one another. Uh, around the dinner table, pray for family members together uh, as you have, have dinner or after dinner, just to stop and bring those concerns before God. Pray for God's peace over your neighbors. If they're fretting and they're fearful, perhaps God, that will be an opportunity for you to share how God's peace has come upon you and your family as you just release that to him and you've allowed him to be your fortress, your refuge, your strength, and an opportunity to share with them the peace of God. And maybe to peek in their minds and their hearts, uh, how, how does that happen? What does that mean? to trust God in times like this. These are uncertain days, but God will give us great opportunities, I believe, to share his goodness, his grace, his mercy, his peace with others as we look for opportunities, as we pray for those. Again, if we can be of help to you in any way, if I can, or any of our of, uh, leadership team here, we would love to do that. Let us know. I'm praying for you, praying for our opportunity to regather soon, and looking forward to continuing together, to meet together, and to share together, and to grow together in Christ in these coming days. 
So thank you for tuning in and listening and being a part of what God is doing here at Aviano Baptist Church. We look forward to reconvening our meetings on Sunday as soon as possible, and we will keep you updated on that and look forward to hearing from you and uh, learning how we can minister to you even during this time of our separation physically. So God bless you. Thank you for tuning in, and I look forward to meeting you personally.